afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's episode of Whack Attack. I'm your host, Chowdhury Whack, is bringing you another fun-filled show. But before we get into the juicy bits, uh, we're going to kick you off, get you all warmed up with some Will Smith. And he's going to pump us up with some getting jiggy with it. So getting jiggy with it, and then we'll get into the deep stuff. Here you go. Bring it. That was Will Smith with getting jiggy with it. Isn't that a fascinating track to just bop to the top two. You're listening to Whack Attack, a one-hour comedy slash parody show not intended to offend anyone's views, but just for us to have a very good banterous time. Now, uh, today we got some slight different. Abu Ayyub won't be here today. Uh, he's on vacation, last you told me, so instead of him, we're going to have our good friend Trace come and talk to us about the new stories of the day. So, uh, without further ado, let's get in with the new stories of the day. So, uh... Uh, Trace, how you doing, my friend? Why well, I'm I'm quite I'm I'm doing all right, my friend. It's it's been a while since I've uh, since I've spoken to you. I, I thought you weren't gonna get back to me after the last time. I I, I don't know what was happening, man. Uh, Trace, no, you you're always a welcome guest back on our show. We, why would we not like to have your input? Uh, I, I don't know, my friend. I, I, it's just I have different views compared to me, friend Abu. So I thought that you thought my views might not have been as good enough uh, to be on your show. But I do appreciate that you're having me on tonight a lot. Thank you so much for this. Uh, it's it's I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, so first news story is um, Trace Cot and Haddock may vanish from Scotland's west coast. Now, scientists from uh, Scottish Association for Marine Science, or SAMS, uh, they predict that the cold water species will vanish from the west coast by the year 2100. Uh, and researchers suggest that the fish are already nearing edge of their temperature tolerance range. What do you think about that? Well, I think that is some jolly good news, my friend. You know, like, let me tell you why. I went to Scotland not too long ago, and when I went there, I tried their local delicacy. You know, you got got your haggis, but I tried this thing, this thing called fish and chips. Oh my God! I I was expecting to, for it to put in my mouth and for flavor to just expel out. You know, oil, flavor, fish everywhere in all directions. But all I got was some chunky chips and some 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 fish that had absolutely no flavor whatsoever so I, I'm quite happy that you know cod and haddock are, are going extinct up in Scotland because it, 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 it they need really need to change their cuisine up there they need to find find something that's that's much more flavorful you know at least haggis it may it may not look the most appetizing but let me tell you something oh it tastes good it's always the things that look the weirdest are the ones that taste the best if you know what I'm saying yeah, definitely. Um, they did say that uh, g uh, global warming is the cause of this. Uh, I know you ain't a big fan of that, but they also said that other species will replace them. Uh, so maybe it's not the end of fish and chips. Maybe you can find something else. You know? Well, that that is absolute. That that is what we need. We need change. Now, I may not believe in global warming as it is, but you know what I do believe? I believe that you need to have change. And when the cod and the haddock, they all die out, you're going to get new species of fish coming in. You're going to get you're going to get some, uh, what was a nice species? You might get some turtle. I wouldn't mind consuming some turtle. Back down in Alabama, I have alligator turtle all the time. And let me tell you, ain't nothing on this God's green earth that can beat a good turtle soup, my friend. So I think this is all for the best. We may cry and weep for the cod and the haddock, but at least we'll still have new species. You know, that's what life is about. Regeneration. Karma. So, uh, I didn't, I had no idea you were big on karma. Yeah, I, call, I, I, li I love 
karma. I live by the idea of karma. I, you know, I, I used to be quite a closed-minded human being until I, I went traveling. You know, I went, I went to Nevada. I went to Kentucky. You know, I met some fine people there who taught me all about this so-called karma thing. And you know, it really opened my eyes. There's more to life than just trucks and guns. It's, it's all about the good things. You know, the fresh air, all that. All right, Trace. Uh, so, the, bringing back uh, about global warming, uh, 2017 is very likely to be in the top three warmest years on record. Now, this year, 2017, is likely to be in the top three warmest years on record, according to professional, uh, provisional figures from the World Meteorological Organization, or the WMO. And it says it will likely be the hottest year in the absence of the El Nino uh, phenomenon. So, what do you got to say about that? Uh, my fr my friend, what are they doing now? They are making lists. They're making lists about the top three hot. Why do we gotta put everything in lists? Why can't we just enjoy the weather? I I was here not too long ago. I've I've been here in the UK. You know, just wisdom family and everything. You know, gotta go back to the ancestors. Gotta go back to the motherland. You know, and and I was here down in October, and they had lovely weather. You know, I had people people coming out having picnics when they normally be inside watching like watching like eight out of ten cats or whatever you guys watch up here in the UK so I, I don't understand why it's a big record that it's the warmest year on record I don't really need to know that it's the warmest year on record I can feel it you know and and well, so is that is that it to that new story is there something else you gotta tell me uh, well, they say that uh, many of the extraordinary weather events seen this year are hallmarks of climate change. Uh, all right, all right. You ju did you just say extraordinary weather events? Now, I, 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 we sure we got floods and we got hurricanes, but my friend, did we see? Did we see anything that was at the level of what my homie uh, Noah witnessed back in the back in the days of the Lord? No, unless it's time for me to build an ark and get out of this town there ain't no there ain't nothing that's gonna stop me from uh fr from from leaving this place you know what i'm saying uh all right uh we'll be um that's been trace he's gonna be uh back with us to discuss more news stories of the day we got one more and then we're gonna then we're gonna have a very special guest with us uh and hopefully th they'll show up this time because that is last time they kind of like uh played play like a big prank on us so before then we're going to get you in the feel-good mood of things with some Neil Diamond. Now, he's got some really good tracks like Coming to America, all that jazz. But we're going to listen to Sweet Caroline. Enjoy, y'all. is Insanity Radio, 103.2 FM. That was Def Leppard. What a great rock band with their song Pour Some Sugar on Me. I think that might have been the song that Jennifer Aniston danced to and We're the Mills, but I'm not sure. But it is a great track. Welcome back. You're listening to Whack Attack, a one hour comedy slash parody show not intended to offend anyone, but just for us to have a very good, feel good time. So, uh, where we left off, we were talking about the news stories of the day. We were halfway through them, and uh, Trace. Uh, 
uh, is going to finish us off with the with the last uh, news stories. So, uh, Trace, uh, are, are you still hanging in there? <clears throat> yeah, my friend, uh, I'm, I'm still here. Where did you think I was going to go? I'm always been here. I've been here for a very long time. Uh, let, let, let's, let's wrap this up. Come on, let, let's do this. All right, uh, so the first story is, uh, the, the last story is, Big Void identified in Khufu's Great Pyramid at Giza. Now, it's not known why the cave, uh, why the cavity exists, or indeed if it holds anything of value, because this cavity that has been identified in the Pyramid of Giza is unaccessible. And uh, this this fi- this newly found cavity was found directly above Grand Gallery. So, Trace, give me your thoughts. Well, well, that I'm telling you, my friend, this is what I've been talking to you about for so long. I've been telling you that aliens are real, but you never, ever believe me. Now, last time you had me on the show, I told you that 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 that, that, that I had an alien encounter myself, and I told you that they built the pyramids. But what did you say? You took it as like a grain of salt, as I was talking something stupid. Now, tell me, what? Why, 3,000 g- gajillion years, or however long ago, these uh, these Egyptian dudes were were uh, walking like Egyptians and things, how could they make such a complicated structure and then put, like, rooms in it, but not only put rooms in it, but put, like, a big cavity? Now, number one, why in a shape of a triangle? Why would they keep it in a shape of a triangle? Do they not know what a house looks like? I mean, they had mud houses. Why would you go for a triangle? Don't you think, even the slightest, that maybe, just maybe, hear me out for a second, this could be a possible spaceship that they used to anchor up into the heavens. And this cavity ain't a cavity, but a rocket fuel station, if you know what I'm saying. Trace, you're you're talking you're talking nonsense, my friend. But they, this what this pyramid. The reason why they made it into a triangle was so that they could keep things in there fresh, you know, for for long periods of time. Not because it was it's a spaceship that can go into space. It's just like uh, a little. It's a nice ergonomic. You don't want everything to be a square. You don't want every single building in the world to look the same. You want there to be difference. You want there to be variety. So what's wrong with making a triangle shaped building, you know, back back in the day. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that, that it, it does not make sense to me it, in my in my head that why on earth you would just out of the blue, you got you, okay, you got your, uh, sure you got your sphinx, I'll take that that's made by humans, I mean it, they could have done a good job with the face but you know they did what they did with the technology that they had, but you're, you're telling me that they just go from like tombs and like catacombs to like these and I, I, I've never been to Egypt, but I've seen the Mummy 1, I've seen the Mummy 2, and I've sure as hell seen Mummy 3. And what I know that's consistent in them is that the pyramids are huge. They're like these giant structures that just, that they just look like they take people up into space for. Right? It doesn't make any sense that you'd have a triangle shape. I mean, you're in the desert. I'm sure things can keep fresh for a long period of time. No, Trace, in the desert, that's, uh, things go off like crazy, like, um, I- I'm from a reasonably hot, hot land, and things go off like uh, 24-7 there. If you keep something uh, that's not refrigerated, it just goes off. So the triangles, you know, may be uh, the best way to, uh, to keep things fresh. You know, your, your, your mummies, your uh, vegetables, if they, if they, whatever they had back in the day. So it's, it's not only alien. Well, okay, okay. All right. So I'll, I'll keep your idea that they didn't make it and that it's not an alien spaceship but that will never ever make me believe that aliens don't exist because you know they exist you know out there somewhere up in the heavens there's someone looking down at us right now and I, I well my great grandpappy told me this one big story well, he, I mean he was on some he was on a lot of moonshine but he did tell me this one story he told me one night he was he was out there feeding the cows hurting them, you know, doing the things you do before you go to bed. 
did. And he told me he heard this uh, little whiskers out, out, out in the, out in the cornfield, right? And so he went to investigate because he's a strong, he's, he's a man who wants to know what, what he's like Scooby Doo, wants to get to the bottom of things. So he went down there and he told me he saw these shimmering lights and he got taken up. He got taken up into this big spaceship. And what happened there was that um, this this alien he like had him all all like uh, all at like gunpoint, start probing him and stuff. All, all right, I think I think you're. Um Grand, granddad was just on, on a lot of moonshot. I, I, I mean, do you have any evidence for this? I, I don't really have much evidence for it, but, like, I mean, we could, we, I, 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 I believe my grandpappy's he's a great man. All, all right, all right, Trey. Uh, thank you so much for giving your, for your, for your input for the news stories of the day. We'll keep, we'll keep you, uh, we'll keep you on the loop. I, I won't let you go for, for that long. Thank you so much, my friend. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you, uh, seeing you soon. Uh, bye bye now. All right, so that was uh, Trace uh, bringing us the news stories of the day. Next up, we have a very special guest. Marge Simpson herself is going to be here answering some questions. Now, uh, before we get deep in with Marge Simpson, we're going to have um, songs. Now, this is going to be, this. Is the, the next song is one from the subcontinent, from the land of India. And uh, I hope you all like it because it's from a, from a nice little Bollywood movie called Race. This is Lela. Melella, enjoy y'all. This is Insanity Radio, 103.2 FM. I won't let you down, I will not give you up. Freedom, hold on to my freedom, my freedom. You got to give what you take, what you take. Yeah. That was George Michael with Freedom 90. Welcome back to Wack Attack, comedy slash parody show. Not intended to offend anyone's views, but just for everybody to have a very good time. I hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. We just had uh, our news stories of the day with uh, Trace instead of Abu because he's on vacation. But uh, we're going to move in to uh, a separate section of the show. And we got like uh, a very special guest with us today, all the way from Springfield. Field, we've got Marge Simpson. So Marge, how are you doing? Hi, I'm Marge. All, 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 all right, Marge, we know who you are. So could you help us in asking and answering uh, some some quick questions, if, if you don't mind? I, I don't mind at all. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, you, I'm not going to ask you, like, basic questions. I'm going to get, like, into your head. You know, I'm going to ask you, like, where you live, stuff like that. We're going to ask you some uh, deep, deep questions. So the first deep question is, uh, are you a dog person or are you a cat person? Oh, that is a very hard question. <laughs> now, um, I, I actually, I, I don't know because I have a dog. And I have a cat, but uh, I do have to say I favor my dog sometimes. Uh, Marge, are you okay? Your your voice seems a bit is it seems a bit off today. Are you are you fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. I just I just had a cold. You know, it's um it's cold season in Springfield, and uh, everyone's throats is all messed up. All right. Uh, so, uh, th- th- no worries. You know, thank you for for being here. D- okay, I'm gonna ask you another. Um, do you? Uh, okay, what's your what's your favorite uh, Disney princess? This is uh, the question that cracks everyone. Uh, w- w- pick any, like since you're a special guest, pick any Disney uh, princess that tickles your fancy. Well, uh, if if I had to pick. 
pick one, it would be um probably Jasmine because I I don't know she she likes to ride on magic carpets. Wait wait wait, uh, uh, Marge, your, your voice is is, get, is is cutting off. Are you are you okay? Are you in a in, in a sane environment? Yeah yeah. <coughs> Oh, oh, wait, 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 who is that? <laughs> oh, okay, I'm so sorry, man. There's only so long someone can phlegm for that long. You know, it is hard doing a Marge impression, okay? Jesus, okay. Oh, God, Abu, what are you doing here? Uh, well, my friend, uh, you, you, you had me on, so I, I'm just, uh, I, I came to fulfill my duties, you know what I'm saying? I had a new uh, business show uh, to start with you today. No, Abu, that was supposed to be for next week. What are you, I was supposed to have March Simpson today. What are you doing? <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry, I, I could not. Um, I, I'm sorry, I could not do uh, your 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 Marge impression. Uh, did you really think that Marge impression would 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 agree to do your show right now? Are you are you for real? <laughs> I mean, it is it is quite it's quite it's, it's, it's quite a funny joke, if in my opinion. Uh, or uh, that really like uh, twice I I've, I've been catfished about uh, having Marge on show. First time it was with Pierre, now it's with you. So. Um, after after uh, traumatizing me like that, would you tell me what, what you're here for? Well, my friend, I'm here to do a business show, as I told you. This time, I, I know you're paying me for it, so I because I, I got my uh, PayPal uh, funds a little while before the show. That's why I thought you wanted me to be on today, but never mind. Um, so I'm going to do, do a new segment, as, uh, as you know. It is going to be called Abu Talks Business. All right. So uh, today, our thing comes from... Um, Paradise uh, Peppers. This is about the U2 singer Bono. So Bono has been linked to tax probe in Lithuania. Now a Lithuanian shopping mall partly owned by U2's Bono is under investigation uh, for potential tax avoidance following a probe prompted by the Paradise Papers. So this means that the mall that uh, that, that the U2 singer Bono has uh, avoided paying 47,000 euros in local taxes. That is a lot of money. I, I, so you know what? I bet when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the best tax avoidance technique, Bono still hasn't found what he is looking for. Did you get what I am saying there? <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a U2 joke. Did you say uh, he still hasn't found what he's looking for? That was, that was really, really top, top banter there, Abu. <laughs> My friend, that took me like. Three hours to come up with that with that joke, and this is what this is the this is the kind of uh, response you 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 give to me. I mean, I, I, why why the hatred, man? It's just I wasn't expecting you today, so that's it's, you just caught me off uh, off guard. So. Um, I, I didn't even get a chance to introduce you. So this was uh, our, our good friend. This is our good friend Abu Ayub. He's been on the show a few times before. He mainly talks to us about the news stories. And I told you he was on vacation. But uh, apparently he wasn't. He was uh, r right here just uh, doing a doing a Marge Simpson impression. Uh, so uh, Abu, uh, since, since, we're, since it's, your, it's your segment, Abu Talks Business, uh, and you talked about Bono's offshore tax havens, could you tell me, if if you were in that state, because uh, you're not in the state right now, but if you were, would you have an offshore tax haven to uh, avoid tax? Well, my friend, that is a very good question. You know, I always considered myself to be an entrepreneur. You know, I I like to open businesses. I like to open, I like to open new things. As you know, I had a surf shop in Cape Town that went bust. I had a surf shop in Florida that went bust because of the hurricanes and things. So I, I I'm not the best when it comes to business. But if one of my surf shops became the biggest surf shop in the world, you know what I would do with that money? Of course, they tax the rich one percent and whatnot, and I would probably be in the the rich 1%. So I would not want to give all my hard-earned surfboard money to, 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 to the people, you know, for other things. I want to keep the money for myself. So I, I would do exactly what the bottom would do. You know what? I would not have one offshore tax haven. I would have three offshore tax haven. That way, in case one gets found out, at least I will have a few other to fall back on, if you know what I'm saying. All right, Abu, you, you, you're basically agreeing to being a criminal in the future in case your surfboard industry goes... Um, goes up uh up in numbers uh but thank you for your for for your input my friend uh although don't, please don't do that again okay my friend i will i will try not to do that again but you, you got to admit it was 
like it was it was pretty funny. I mean, I'm from from where I'm sitting. It is it is it is very funny seeing your face when uh, when you when you were like, oh my god, this isn't Marge Simpson, and the voice just kept deteriorating. It was <laughs> it was it was it was good fun. All right, so that was Abu with him talking about business, about how uh, U2 singer Bono is, uh, is avoiding tax and all that jazz. Uh, next up, we're going to be playing my all-time favorite singers of all time, Michael Jackson. Now, I'm not going to be playing Billie Jean or Thriller or all that, but I'm going to be playing another big hit of his uh, from the 80s. This is The Way You Make Me Feel by Michael Jackson. Take it away, mate. This is Insanity Radio, 103.2 FM. That was Take On Me by AHA, a special request from Miss Amy Pagan and Phoebe Bunker, who are listening from their Anglefield Greenhouse. I see y'all. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate y'all for, for listening uh, to the show today. Uh, that that uh, concludes our uh, today this today's episode of Wack Attack. Hope you have uh, hope you've enjoyed the show and have a uh, wonderful uh, rest of the day. I'll catch you guys next time, Tuesday, three to four, as always. But before I leave y'all, I'm gonna play an absolute banger this this guy has been uh, surfing all over the internet he's been pop popping and scrapping all over your Facebook walls your Instagram feeds and everything uh, so without further ado I'm gonna end the show today with man's not hot by big shack enjoy yo big shack the one and only man's not hot Never hot. Scrap. Skitty cat cat. Boom. Two plus two is four. Minus one, that's three. Quick maths.